Hi everyone, in this video, I'll show you how to create this beautiful interactive neomorphic zoom design. To demonstrate how to create these interactive animations and buttons, I'll be using slides and elements from my own neomorphic template. If you'd like to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. So, let's get designing. Our first step is to set up the layout of our primary slide. And in order to do that, I'll first paste in some of my pre-existing elements. Having pasted in these neomorphic elements, I'll change the background color to a light green so everything matches beautifully. I'll then add a new section and paste in the pre-existing neomorphic slides from my template. Then. We can go over to slide 1 again, go to insert and now we can add our slide zoom. So let's insert these four slides that we just added. Let's adjust their size a little bit and then we'll place them around each number. So since this is the last slide this goes to number 4 and so on. Having roughly placed everything. We can select everything and ensure that all our elements are properly aligned. So we'll center align and middle align them relative to our number objects. There we go. And I'll also select our four zooms and give them an outline that matches the number colors. And there we have it, that's our basic layout ready. Now for the animations. The first thing we need to do is make the central element into a clickable button. So let's go over to animations and let's give it a glow shrink effect. Let's go over to our animation pane, effect options and in size let's change it to 80%. Then we can increase our smooth starts and ends to roughly the middle and click on auto reverse. We'll also decrease the duration of this animation to 0.25. So it looks like this. The next step is to animate these four buttons surrounding our central button so that when we press the central button they all fly out simultaneously. We'll start with number one. We'll give it a zoom effect and we'll change it to 0.75. Then we'll add an animation of a motion path and we'll drag it to the center of our central button. We'll set both these animations to start with previous. We'll change our motion path to 0.75 as well. So it looks something like this. Next, for our motion path, we'll go over to effect options and reverse the path direction. So now, the button will flow from the center outwards. Let's take a look. And that looks pretty good. Then we can select button number 1, click on animation painter twice. And add the same animation to all the other buttons. Then we simply drag the green pointer to the center for each one. And finally, we'll click on the central button and bring it to front. Now let's take a look in full screen. Press the center button and the four buttons appear. Next what we'll do is add the same button effect to these four buttons so that each can be individually clicked and our slide zoom floats in. So let's do that next. For each of these buttons to be individually clickable and bring in their own sections, we'll have to add some trigger animations. I'll show you how to do that next. Let's select button 1 again. Let's add an animation. Let's give it the grow shrink effect. And similar to the first one, let's go to effect options. Let's make it smaller, 
give it a smooth start, smooth end and auto reverse. And similarly, we'll decrease the duration. This time we'll decrease it to 0.25 and then we'll go to trigger on click of this is group one like that. So it creates its own trigger group. Then on the zoom, we'll add a fly in animation. We'll get it to fly in from left and we can also give it a slight bounce. Then on trigger, on click off, again group 1. So it goes to the group. Make sure it starts with previous. So I'll show you what that did. We press the center button. Then we press button 1, which causes this to zoom in. And similarly, we'll create the same trigger groups for all four sections. Let's do that now. We'll select button 2, add animation, grow shrink, effect options, smaller, smooth start, smooth end, and auto reverse. And the timing goes down to 0.25. Then you click a trigger on trigger of group 15 this time, then select our slide zoom fly in from right and again we can give this one a bounce end if we want and then on trigger on pick of group 15 then we set it to start with previous and now i'll quickly add the same trigger groups to three and four as well And there we go. I've created four trigger groups for our four buttons. Let's test it out. Press the central button and our four surrounding buttons appear. And you can press any in any order depending on which slide you want to show first. For example, if you want to show number four first, we can do that. Click on the zoom. Show your slide and then return back. And once again, instead we can go to number 3, and so on. And that looks really nice. So there you have it folks. That's how you can create this interactive pneumorphic design. And of course, if you'd like to check out the full pneumorphic template, it's available on my website. I'll link it down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.